Hi everyone, are you able to hear me clearly and see the screen clearly? Hi Alok, hi Bintao, hi Grishma, hi Hitendr, hi Kartikeyan, hi Noor, Prashant, Ravi, Robin and Sachin. Great, great to have you in the session. With me we have Abhinav uh, and uh, so the way we are going to do it is that Abhinav will be the one who will uh, basically do the admin, uh, do the uh, do the execution and I'll be the one who will be speaking. Okay. Who has uh, the lab mostly he, he heads the DevOps, he heads the, the engineering behind it. All right. So it's better that he, uh, he does the, he, he shows you how exactly it is done. And I think it's a, it's a good opportunity. All right. So, okay, so I'm going to allow recording to Alok. Does anybody else wants to record? All right. All right, Robin also, okay. Bintao, okay. All right, I think there's no limit. Okay, so let me see if I could allow recording. Okay. Allowed everybody just to check how many people can record. Great. So I have allowed everybody to record. I hope you are able to do that. And just wanted to check who all can record. Okay. Great. Wonderful. Okay. So allow the chat. Actually, chat should be there anyway in your documents. After the session, you will get a copy of the Zoom chat probably in your documents. Otherwise, the chat is always recorded, okay? Just the chat does not come in the video. It comes at its own way, but other than that, everything is okay. Okay, great, great. All right, so in today's session, what we are going to do is, we are going to install the Hadoop cluster on three machines, okay? Hadoop cluster on three machines. I'm just going to again draw something which might look a bit ugly, but okay. So here, uh, so basically we are going to have three machines, okay, on which we are going to install Hadoop, okay. This is going to be uh, mostly, uh, I mean, going to be everywhere, okay while the name node will be on probably we will put name node on one of the machines probably this one okay and uh, then other services so these services we will choose later okay these three services we will choose later all right we will learn that part so the general idea is that we start with three machines and how we will we start? Either we install Hadoop on all these machines manually, download Hadoop, Hadoop, configure them, but that's totally inefficient. So we either use Cloudera's manager or we use Ambari. So today we are going to use Ambari. This, on this, we are going to install Ambari server. Okay, so first of all, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to buy these the uh, instances at Amazon, then we will follow the Ambari's guideline. And this is what we're going to do. So first we'll take the, okay. And the machine configuration we are going to see as we do, all right. So here, this is going to be Ambari server. Okay, so this is the one to which we all will see. This is what we, basically we'll open in the browser we all will open we as in 
Avina will open in the browser and then keep on adding these machines in, into this uh, thing. And Ambari will then install all the components that are required here. It will basically install whatever is required. Okay, so this is how it is. So basically the Ambari server is the first one that we are going to work with. All right, so that's pretty much, I think that just, too much. So, all right, the URL that we are going to follow also, let me just share this document with all of you. Okay, I'm going to share this link to the, the, uh, the link to this one with all of you. Okay, and all right, so it says anyone with the link. So now you should be able to see the, okay, so this is the, this is the, Okay, great, great. Now, uh, all right. Now, I mean, I'm gonna say that we will use 16 GB RAM machines so that the installation will go smoothly. We should always be have having the minimum configuration. So the general style of uh, installation is you must take a look at this URL. It helps you understand what are the various steps required. So in this, these are the various, determine the stack compatibility, minimum system requirements, collect the information. So this is what actually we are going to partly follow. Okay, we, this is what we're going to follow. And out of this, instead of this, we are going to follow probably this one, right? The, the CentOS 7, right? So this is what we are going to follow, all right? And let me see, yeah, CentOS 7 is what we're going to follow. All right, now I'm, I'll stop sharing the screen. You keep an eye on uh, this document, right? This is what we are going to go with. All right, so, so I'm going to stop sharing and Abhinav, you can take it from here. The general the core idea is that we'll install Ambari first of all. First of all, we will take the three nodes uh, machine. On one of the nodes, we will install Ambari. Then we'll open the uh, various ports which are required for the demo purpose. And the detailed steps are these. Detailed steps are launch three instances. And uh, this is what we are going to follow through the class. All right, so I'm going to stop share and let Abhinav demo show the screen. I think multiple people can't show the screen here. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to launch three instances of T2X large type. AWS Amazon gives us this various configurations. The one which we are going with is 16, 16 GB RAM, which is T two X large. Okay. All right. So you can see that we are in the AWS console. Okay. So this is what we get when we choose the Amazon machine image. So we are selecting the CentOS 7. Okay. So here it uh, shows you all the pricing and everything. Now at this point, we're basically selecting the instance type. Okay, you can see 16 GB RAM, four CPU uh, and so on. So there are various configurations. The cost varies accordingly. Okay. All right. So here the number of instances, we are going to go with three of such ones. And then we are going to also add hard disk probably, right? So this is, um, uh, okay. So I think the first volume that we are doing is 100 GB one. The, the, the hard disk that we are adding is 100 GB. Okay. And please note that we are going to go with the magnetic volume type because the SSD is great in the cases where we don't have HDFS, here HDFS is the one which is going to consume a lot of disk because it has the application vector up and so on. Therefore, it makes more sense to go with magnetic. Why we are 
why am I am emphasizing on the magnetic type? Because last time we made a similar mistake earlier while setting up our cluster, where we chose the SSD, which was costing us, costing us more, but providing us less storage because the HDFS, when it, it will consume three GB of disk in order to give you one GB of storage. So therefore it makes more economical sense to have it magnetic, all right? So let me also open the chat part, I, okay, go ahead. All right, so we are going to We're going to give the names to the server. Okay. We're going to give the names to the cluster. Then we, we already have created an existing security group. You can also create your new security group if you want. And in this, we are allowing all the ports. Okay, we are allowing all the ports and, and so that the Okay, so that there are there are no, no restrictions, right? All right, so we created our own security group, continue with magnetic boot volume. Okay, so good, good. So here we can either create a new pair or we can, we can also, you know, use if you have already created uh, the. So what is wait wait? I'll I'll explain to you what does it mean. So instead of every time log giving login giving password and all and so on, for every machine, what Amazon provides you is the private public key kind of a model, right? So what will it do is it will generate this private public key, it will give you the private key, and it will say save the public key on all the machines. Now, what does it mean? It means that the machines are locked and you have the keys. And whenever you log in, automatically the handshake will happen between your machine to this one, provided you keep the private key at the right position. All right, so this is the important part. So, so here we are downloading the key pair, okay? And, uh, okay, so you can say HTTP demo, okay? So we are downloading the key pair, which we can, we will be save, saving in our home directory later. M, the private key. Now we will use this to log into the cluster so that we don't have to provide login, password and other things. Okay. A question from uh, Sachin is, what is the meaning of magnetic? Magnetic is the normal hard disk. Okay. SSD is the solid state one, which is costly and gives you less space. Okay, magnetic is slow, but is uh, less costly and gives you more space. Okay. All right, let me allow, allow Subu also to record. Uh, all right, Subu, I can, okay, I can see now. Allow recording. Great. Now, uh, where are we? So great. The instances are being initialized. Okay. So these are the new instances that we have uh, just now created. The names of these, uh, the, the name of the cluster is Hadoop nodes. That's the one which we have chosen just now. Okay. Now, at this point, we should change the permission of the download key to this one so that nobody else can access it. If you don't change the permission, you won't be able to log in with this, okay? Reason is that uh, it's kind of a security feature that if your private key is public, not, no, you should not keep your private key unsafe, all right? So it's like using this instead of again and again logging, logging, uh, using login and password. Here we are using this private key to log in. Okay. All right. So since we saved it in our home directory, 
we we are uh, going to use that okay find name star dot pm uh, uh, put dot after it in the end space dot no last last put dot end of the line put dot yeah oh yeah that's right okay so we did we save it mm, i think what you can do is you can open the files you can open the files in the files you will be having the recent ones there it will show you the recent one okay recent uh, is it in downloads I remember it was in Abhinav. Wow, I have so many. Okay. That's it, Mander. Okay, so this is Hadoop HDP demo. Yeah, Hadoop HDP demo. Seven zero zero, sorry, four zero zero Hadoop HDP demo. The idea is not to give the permission to read or view to 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 read or view to any anybody from your group or others. That's why the last two digits are zero zero. In Unix, the permit the, that's the way you define the permissions. Okay, now let's give the name to the server we have all right. So we are going to name one of the node to uh, Hadoop Ambari server. Okay, and the others. Okay, and then we're going to give Hadoop data node. Should we keep it data node? Yeah. So it's okay to give uh, same name to others or do we have to give them one or two? All right, great, great. So we have basically given them the uh, group names. All right. Now we are going to log in to individual using the downloaded private key that that's the one that, that we, we okay. So again, why we are emphasizing uh, Amazon emphasize on private key instead of you trying to save the password here and there. You need to keep this private key safe, okay? So it's like entering the password from a file, okay? So we're going to say SSH, I, I as in this is my input key, and we are going to provide the IP address. So by default, it creates the CentOS as the user on all the machines, okay? So here we are saying, Log in to that particular IP address. And when it says continue uh, connecting, you just say yes. Okay. It says permanently added to the list of files. That's good. So we, you can see that we are perfectly logged in. You can see the prompt. It shows that it is NTOS at that particular IP address. Okay. I hope you can locate the IP address from the AWS console. Abhinav, could you show again? the IP address of that machine. So you can see that this is a public IP address. Okay, this is the public IP address, <laughs> wonderful. So this is the public IP address. So every machine has got a public IP address. Every machine has got a private Okay, so private IP address is for internal communication and public IP address is for external communication. Internal means amongst these, um, amongst these machines. Again, we are opening the, uh, we are doing the SSH in another terminal. 
So you can see we are able to successfully log in in log in in these three machines. Okay, so we'll keep these uh, three three tabs open so that we can, uh, whenever required, we can just uh, switch the tabs. So we have first tab for first server, second for second, and okay. A question from Hitendra, is Ambari server name node? Not really. So right now we're just using Ambari server as the starting point. So Ambari server will install everything in all machines. And during the installation, it will ask you which service will go where. Where would name node go? Where will data node go? It will ask us when we start installation. Okay, now once we are there, now we are going to log into all of these and do sudo yum update. Sudo yum update, what does that do? It will update the packages on all the, on the machine. Yum is the package manager on Red Hat. These are CentOS machines, and that means this is Red Hat. Manager on CentOS machines, which basically downloads, updates, or installs new packages or uninstalls. So here we are basically running the same command yum update on all of the machines. Okay, now we will keep interacting with these three terminals. A question from Alok, why uh, we cannot use Ubuntu machines? We can use Ubuntu machines, just that uh, Ambari has been uh, tested and very well documented for CentOS. Therefore, we generally it's completely okay to install on Ubuntu machines. For that matter, it's completely okay to install on Windows machine. What does yum update do? Yum update updates all the packages because the instances that Amazon has given us are a bit older in package. So we need to update the software on these machines. Is this 100 GB for all the three instances? So this is 100 GB magnetic storage, which is on each of the three machines, which means there will be 300 GB out of the 300 GB, there will be 20 GB that will uh, 20... we'll put it in the HDFS, okay? A question from Prasant, which one is used in enterprises? Uh, instead of Ubuntu, people use a Red Hat and Red Hat is nothing but CentOS. Is my voice breaking for others? Oh, correct. Uh, so I'm going to switch my internet connection for a moment because I got connected to five gigahertz, which is not right. As, as David also pointed out uh, day before yesterday. So I'm going to switch to Okay, so I am again back. Are you able to hear me? Great, great. So, so here we are. Uh, I think we are done with updating various packages. Great, great. All right. So far, everything is going good. Yes, we are going to have two classes this weekend. So yeah, Noor's question is, can you repeat the 20 GB part of it? So basically out of 300 GB, some part will stay on the local file system. Some part uh, like around 75 to 80% will go to HDFS that we will decide later, all right? Great, great. Now, once we are done with that, now what we have to do is we have to make CentOS as sudoer on all the machines, okay? Sudoer on all the machines. Why do we do that? Who is a sudoer? Sudoer is somebody who can do the administrative task, right? Sudoer is somebody who can do the administrative task. Therefore, we will make CentOS as sudoer. So how do we do that? Using this command called vi sudo. 
that's basically modified vi okay and we just mention whatever is there for the root we mention the same thing in this file we just append one more line go to the end, end of the line Okay, you can see that allow root to run any commands anywhere. Similarly, we are saying allow CentOS to run any command anywhere. Okay, that means on all the machines, this is what we are saying. CentOS can do anything on these machines. Okay, CentOS is the login that we have used. What is sudo vi sudo? Basically, we, the vi sudo is used to make anybody the, the anybody a user who can do anything on behalf of root sudo means um, sudo means um, super user do su is for super user do for do doing and uh, when you say sudo that means you can do something like a super user so if you put people into vi sudo that means they can add it, do anything which which super user can do so vi sudo again has to be executed with a command called sudo and that's it so using sudo command now centos will happily be able to do anything on this machine without any further problems although it was able to do sudo before also but now it becomes complete control right just to be on the safer side okay question from no is can you update the doc with the file name um uh, you mean the the pem file name the private key file name is that your question okay yeah it comes this is the command so when we say sudo vi sudo it actually vi sudo is nothing but it opens the vi with the etc sudo or file there is a file called etc sudo or that's the one it opens by default okay all right wonderful wonderful now now on each machine verify if the host name is properly set so host name is a command with dash f it gives the full details about the host name so you can take a look at all the host names and then check okay so you can see that host name is properly set though it is internal but it is properly set A question from Grishma is, can you also update the doc with softwares needed to be installed on your system? On your system, the only thing that is required to be installed is the SSH or PuTTY. Okay, SSH helps you to log into the remote. The three terminals that are running, they're nothing but SSH. Okay, so either you could use PuTTY or you could use SSH uh, to log into these servers. Wonderful, wonderful. So great great now edit the network file next step is to edit the network file and so let's do sudo vi and edit the network file all right so here you can see that on the three machines we have opened opened the opened the network files okay and then we are saying hostname equals whatever full qualified name do you want on these machines okay oh we have to say just fqdn all right uh we have to oh yeah that's what i'm thinking so we have to give it full name that is was specified on host name okay so what we are doing we are basically setting the host name properly all right generally it generally it is generally safe to uh, edit the network file and set the host name explicitly so that you have a complete control of the local host name. Okay. And whenever you're setting up any machines, these are the standard steps you generally need to do. Okay. So whatever we found when we did hostname f on all the three machines, that's what we are doing.
Okay. A question from Grishma is FQDN is different for each machine. That's correct. That's right. Now, the next step is to configure IP tables. What we are going to do is we are going to disable the firewall. Okay, so we are going to disable the firewall for this session. Generally, we should not disable the firewall. Okay, so firewall is a daemon, firewall D it's called, and then that's what we're going to do. So either we say system CTL disable this, or as well as we stop the service. Okay. Okay, it's not all. It's not running already, so no worries. Just to be on the safer side, generally it's better to stop firewall in the cases where you are going to install services, you are going to um, configure services. Great. Great. Now going ahead. All right, now the next step is that we are going to install the basic utilities like yum install, unzip, unzip, wget kind of things because we'll have to download Ambari and then unzip various things. So we are going to just do it on one of the machines. Okay, which is which is where I think, are you going to do it on all machines? Okay, yeah. So unzip and wget is what we're going to install on all the machines. All right, although most of these tasks have been automated on our case, but we are doing it manually so that you all come to know what it is. A question from Sachin is firewall is Amazon firewall? No, actually the firewall comes with the CentOS and that's what we are disabling. A question is when you say install, yum install, where does it install from? Good question. Question is when we say yum install, we are not providing any software, we are just providing a name. So basically yum has something called a central global repository. Okay, CentOS is a user. So yum, yum has a central repository and from using yum, we when we say yum install, it's basically going to bring unzip from uh, remote uh, from the repository, copy it to the local file, local machine, then uh, then install it on the local machine. Okay, so yum yum's duty is that. Now the next thing is um, when we say sudo, why we are doing sudo is yes, uh, sudo is so that because yum install is administrative task and therefore it should be done by the super user. Sudo makes everything every command that follows it run as a super user. All right, a question from Sachin is, uh, is sent to us a user? Yes. Okay, so yes, that's right. That's good analogy, Noor, that it's like Google Play Store for Linux. Good. All right, so this is what we have. Next is we are going to stop SE Linux. Okay, so so we are going to uh, basically disable SE Linux. So the first thing is we are going to run set and force zero. Okay, so various kinds of, uh, I think I see Linux basically stops uh, various kinds of permissions and things like that. So let me just also understand what is SE Linux. I remember doing it, we re doing it once, but I kind of forgot. Okay, yeah, it's a security enhanced Linux. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. So we are going to disable the security, uh, various kinds of security because that's going to, that's going to bother us as we go ahead. Okay. Now we, we basically change uh, the file SE slash SE Linux less config and mark SE Linux equals disabled on all the three machines. And that's pretty much. So here we're going to say disabled. That means no secure Linux policies are loaded yet. And that's it. So we're going to save the file. We're going to reboot the machines uh, and um, 
Now remember that once we to make, bring these into uh, effect, we'll have to reboot the machines. So we can use the command called reboot. Okay, reboot from here. And after a while, we can log in. All right, after this, we are going to edit our profile, ETC profile. What is ETC profile? ETC profile is the global profile for all the users. ETC profile contains commands which get executed when any user logs in into the system. So if you want all the users to see a nice, beautiful banner, you should generally put it inside ETC slash ETC slash profile file, okay? So for now, we are just going to edit this ETC profile so that it uh, basically, it basically, uh, okay, it sets the default value of new files and folders permissions. Okay, on all the three terminals, we have executed this command. Now we are saying unmask 0022 in the end of the file. Okay. All right, wonderful. Now we're going to install NTP. NTP is a network network time server, right? As per my understanding, network time protocol is what is NTP. Yes, that's right. So we're going to install NTP so that the system could synchronize its time and other things. Okay, again, we're going to use EM for installation. So here uh, you can see that in this command, we used three commands in parallel. First we said install dash Y, that means do not ask me, just install. And that means once this first command get run, uh, is run, then the second command called uh, start ND, NTPD would happen. And then that is success. if that is successful, then we will enable that, that service, okay? So these are the three commands that we have run in a chain, okay? If you put or or instead of ampersand ampersand, if you say pipe pipe, that means that we want to run or. But here, what we want to do is first install. If install is successful, that is start the service. If service is successfully started, then enable it as in the for the background. Okay, this is something that we, it took us some time to figure out that this is required, okay? So these are something that, in addition to what Ambari suggests, these are something that we have figured out for ourselves. A question from Noor is, I tried to ping the first server, no reply, does it normally disallow? Yes. Generally, the ping response is disabled. A question from Prasant is, in companies, whose, res whose responsibility it is to create and manage these services and HDFS. Generally, the system administrator, not the DBA. So generally, it is the system administrators who maintain the Hadoop clusters. So, and and um, also the actually the admin is a very generic ta task because there is HR admin, there is a normal admin, there is this admin, there is a database admin. So, so basically, it's mostly the system administrator. It's a team of system administrator. All right, so a question from Sachin is, what is the unmask 022? It's, it's basically a particular thing that is required in order to set such that why the default permissions for each uh, on every machine needs to be set that way, okay? A question from Prashant is, so if we do not know this as a big data analyst, it is okay. Yes, that's completely okay because a Hadoop cluster is installed once in like 10 years, okay? Or once in like five years, you can think of it this way. And 
then it is basically keeps running in that way. Okay, it just maintained. All right, so uh, Prasant, it looks little complicated because it involves many steps, but uh, it is not that hard. For developers or analysts or for data scientists, it's not really mandatory, but one must, uh, uh, since uh, some of us wanted it, it is uh, kind of, it'll be a good thing to know. It is a good thing to know, okay? So when I was at Hinmobi, I'll be very, very honest with you. When I was at Hinmobi, we did all the development with Hadoop and everything, and we did it successfully without having to install a single machine. Okay, and we also did not install on our laptops or any virtual machine, we just used the cluster. So it was there. Great, it's just that when I left uh, Amazon and Inmobi, then I uh, had to go back to my sysadmin that, hey, how do you guys generally install Hadoop in all of the cluster? Then he told me that we generally use Ambari for the entire system, all right? So that's how it is. So most of it, what we are talking here is something that we have discovered and learned by ourselves. And um, and from time to time, I consulted my sysadmins at Inmobi. They are close friends, so that way. All right, good, good. Now let's move on to the next step, okay? Let's uh, start the, the, the Chrome D service. Okay. All right. Now, now is the time that we start with. We, 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 we since Ambari would require to log in onto all these machines. You see, remember this uh, diagram. I'm going to show my screen for a moment, Abhinav. Okay. So, so remember this diagram that we talked about. So here, uh, where did it go? Here. So here, basically, Ambari. These are the three machines yet. Ambari server needs to log into all these machines. Okay. Therefore, we need to set up. We need to set up the passwordless access for Ambari server. Okay. So going, giving back the control to Abhinav. Okay. Great. So we are setting up passwordless access for Ambari. So what we are doing is we are copying the copying the uh, the the um, HDP key, this private key, because private key same for all these servers to uh, to all these um, uh, to to the first machine. Okay. To first machine. I think you have copied that I twice, so I think you have to cancel it. You, you see the command, we have repeated the PEM twice. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, just try. Now, when we are on first machine, this is the machine, the first terminal, you remember this? So on the first terminal, we are on the machine that we are planning to designate as Ambari server. So we have copied the private key to this machine so that this machine can also log into other two servers. You can try logging in now if it is working fine. Okay, now we can, we can try to log into these machines. Okay, so we were able to log into another machine. Similarly, we are trying to log in to the second and third from the first terminal. Please notice that here we are already on the first server where the Ambari was there. Now we are on the server where we are going to install Ambari and we are trying to log into the second, third one. So we have already tried to log in to second one from first which is successful now. So great. So now we are able to successfully log in to other two from the Ambari machine. Okay. Now, 
So what we are doing is we are making sure that Ambari server should be able to under the hood SSH to the other servers and do whatever it wants to do it because it wants to install Hadoop on all these machines. Instead of we logging in, it is the Ambari server which is going to log into these machines and do the installation. Therefore, we are making Ambari capable of logging into these machines. Now, the other thing we are going to do is we're going to install MySQL server on one of the machines. Okay, why are we doing that? Okay, um, just a second, I'll answer Noor's question. So we have only private key for all the three servers, correct. So we are giving this private key to the Ambari server as well, the one that we are going to designate as Ambari server. Okay, the first one, the first tab in our terminal. So in our terminal, we have three tabs representing the three servers. So first one is for Ambari server. Okay, great, great. All right, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to install MySQL on all the on one of the data nodes. Okay, why we need the MySQL server? It, it will be required for two, two machines, two, two purposes. One, it will be required for Ambari to store its configuration. Second, it will be required by Hive server to store its metadata. Now, we are doing wget instead of using uh, using yum we are installing using wget okay so we have installed the community server hive metadata is always in rdbms that's right but not actual data actual data is in hdfs question from grisma is can we know how to transfer data from mysql db to hdfs Okay, we will learn that as part of school. Okay. All right, now we are basically updating the system. We are installing MySQL server after we have installed the community server. Okay. Just installing many things, whatever is the dependency of the server. So it's downloading them and installing those. You can see Perl DBI, MySQL Community Client, Perl File Path, and so on. There are many, many uh, components of MySQL which are written in Perl. Now, at this stage, we are starting the MySQL D. MySQL D is MySQL daemon. What is MySQL daemon? The service that runs in the background is called a daemon. So here we are saying system control start this. It's basically to start a service. A question from Noor is, can we install MySQL to HDFS? No. And we can make MySQL to be distributed. Is it necessary to install MySQL of the data node? We need to install MySQL, but we can install it on any machine. Okay. All right. Next is we are going to set the passwords and other things, other security settings. We are going to use this particular script, which helps us setting up various passwords and things like that. Okay. Okay, so it's saying that uh, if we, since we entered, it is asking us to set the root password. We can generate any root password here and save it. Whatever password you specify here, and you, you will be able to, uh, you, will you will have to keep it safe. Okay, you'll have to keep it safe. I think you can share the password uh, with people so that at the end of the session, we will anyway destroy the these instances. All right, is MySQL used by Ambari? Correct, Ambari is going to use it for saving all the settings we do because Ambari is the one who is going to install Hadoop and other things. So Ambari can't assume that Hadoop is installed. So it can't, um, Ambari can't store things in HDFS or Hadoop. 
Okay, question from Noor is root password means MySQL admin password. That's correct. Can we use Oracle DB? I think we can use Oracle DB because all Mambari uses Java driver, which should work with Oracle as well. Okay. So here we are basically, this is the password we have set for MySQL. It's super complex. It's like a winner one, two, three. All right, so we are going to use that one. And it's completely okay because we are just going to destroy these instances after this session. Okay, great questions. Let's go ahead. We are setting up, we are saying that remove anonymous users and we are disallowing login remotely. Okay. Yes, MySQL is also owned by Oracle. But these are, they are two different databases. Now we are going to reload the privileges table so that so that MySQL starts working correctly. Okay, keep these steps in mind. So we removed the we we disabled disallowed the disallowed the remote login, removed test databases and anonymous users. Okay, great. So these are the steps to secure your uh, MySQL. Now we are going to create databases for Uzi and other things. These will be required by our other services. So when we are installing various services, it will want us to create these databases later. So we are upfront creating these databases so that we don't have to keep coming. So first of all, we are creating a user for Uzi. Okay. And how do we create a user by using this? Okay, so we are saying this is the Uzi is the login and Uzi123 is the password. Okay, the, these will be used by a service called Uzi in Hadoop cluster. Okay, so we are basically setting up the database, MySQL database, so that we can we can uh, do the rest of it. Okay, so we can set up the service and services will have their own databases separate. Can you repost the link to the document? Just give me a second. I will repost. Oh, where did it go? Just give me a second. I'll, I'll repost it. Great. Thank you, Prasanth. All right. Great. Great. So we are able to successfully create the Uzi database. Right? Now, great. Also, now let's create a database for Hive. Okay, this is what we're going to do again. All right, same thing as earlier. Great, so on one of the machines, we have installed MySQL, okay? Because at that point in time, when we need it, we, we won't be able to install MySQL, so we are upfront setting it up. Similarly, Ranger is a service which is required. So we are starting the Ranger. We basically setting up the Ranger itself, but we won't be using it much. Okay. Now we're going to download and check MySQL character connector on Ambari server host. Why? Why it's required? Because Ambari server is written in Java and it needs Java driver for our database. And our database is MySQL. Therefore, we will have to download this particular, we will have to download the MySQL connector for Java. Okay. Also notice that we are using asterisk there. All right. So it's going to find out all the packages which are matching that wildcard and install it. So also notice that it is installing the OpenJDK. MySQL underscore secure underscore installation is a script. Yes. And why are we not creating Ambari database on MySQL? Mm, so I think um, by, uh, so Abhinav, uh, let me let me ask Abhinav. Abhinav, so do we need a database for Ambari? My impression was that we would need a database for Ambari. Okay, I think Ambari will create its own database. Great, great. All right, all right. So Hadoop system is using a lot of RDBMS for metadata, kind of, yes. Okay. 
All right, wonderful. So we have successfully installed the MySQL connector. My, why does my Ambari server does not have this driver live with it? Good point, Alok. Uh, the point is that Ambari server is not enforcing that you must install MySQL, right? And whichever database you use, you will have to use that connector. All right, so that's the, one of the reasons. Good, good. Now let's check if the, the jar has been downloaded and exists in the user share Java and in that folder. Jar is nothing but package, uh, a bunch of files bunched together into the bundle format. Okay, so can we, can we take a look? Yes, it is there, you can see. You can see that it is there. That means there is a, you can see, if you do file here, uh, you know, file and the URL. Okay. All right. No, no, file and that path. Correct. Okay, so you can see that jar is nothing but a zip archive of data, which is specifically for Java class files. A question from Noor is, MySQL secure installation, please update the path of this, it's not given. I think it is there in your normal path itself. Okay, when you install MySQL, it will be set in your user somewhere. Okay, and um, question from Alok is, do we need to specify jar, lo jar location in Ambari somewhere? I don't think so. We'll basically pick it from user share Java, okay? Now, all right, great, great. Now, the other thing is we need to install Java on each machine apart from Ambari server, okay? We are going to install Java on all the machines. Specifically, we are going to install JDK, okay? We're going to install JDK and we're going to use wget and we've already prepared this command to be downloaded from yeah, so it's downloading from the Oracle machine, Oracle servers, the JDK, because JDK is owned by Oracle. All right. So this is what we're doing, we are saying, yum local install and this, meaning from the local RPM, please install this particular program. All right, so then we are going to delete this locally downloaded file once installed. A question from Alok is, how will I get MySQL secure installation? Once you install the MySQL, MySQL community server, those following those steps, this will be there in your in your path. Okay. A question from Sachin is Hadoop ne Hadoop needs JDK. Yes. Hadoop is written in Java and here it needs JDK. Um, uh, because I think generally, as a matter of fact, the whenever you even if you are installing your desktop, let's say you are building you setting up your dev machine for Java, it's always safer to install JDK because JDK, there are many components that require JDK, not only JVM, okay? Here we are using the Oracle JDK instead of Open JDK. Question from Subhu is, can we set up one server, then we can clone it to other instances? Yes. So instead of setting up two instances the way we are doing, we can also do that, that we set up one server and then do the other. But since there are many services, we will have to keep three machines ready, okay? And there is a slight difference between first and the other two, while the installation on other two is exactly identical, okay? While the installation on first one is a bit different, okay? So a question from Subhu is, can we set up one server and then we can clone it? Yeah, that's, that's the one I have answered. Sorry about that. All right, go ahead, Abhinav. So we have removed the one that we downloaded because that JDK is really big. And now the next thing is we are going to install JCE. Uh, Hitin's question is have designated name node yet? Not yet, not really. We just, in our mind, we have the thing that first one is for Ambari. We have not set up even the Ambari. 
The next thing is Java cryptography extension that we have to download from Oracle. And here we'll basically uh, download to our local machine, then SCP there to the server, uh, okay, to uh, over these machines and install it. Okay, so this is JC policy. So we can copy from our local machine from where, where we have downloaded it to these day, newly set up machines. Question from Bintao, why did we install and remove? Basically, we downloaded a file, installed it, then deleted the downloaded file. Why did we delete it? So that it doesn't take up the space because it's a big file. Okay. Question from Noor, why can't we download on server directly because of these agreements, which Oracle has enforced, we are not able to download it directly on the server. They want us to explicitly click, I agree. Okay. They want the user to go to their website. All right, so this is good. So now we are copying this locally downloaded file to our server and uh, just go, let me take a look. Now we are basically copying this file, this policy file into a folder inside our JRE, right? We are saying J, uh, Java JDK slash JRE slash lib slash security. That's where we are copying the policy file that's required because that contains various cryptographic policies. Okay. Done. So we are able to set up the JCE policy on both these machines. We are doing it on the machines where we have set up the JDK just now. Okay. The other two machines. Other than the first one, second and third. Now we are installing Ambari server. All right, so we just downloaded the repo. Please note that we are just downloading here the repo of the uh, Ambari, okay? So we are basically adding the Ambari's repo into the list of e e uh, repos in, the, in yum. Again, the way yum command works is yum command maintains the list of repositories in which it searches, and we are just adding one more repository. JRE stands for Java Runtime Environment. JC uh, stands for Java Cryptographic Environment. Extension, not environment, sorry. JC stands for Java Cryptographic Cryptography Extension. Now, once we have added the repository, downloaded and added the repository into yum, then we are checking the repository with yum repo list yum repo list you can see that yum in the yum repo list ambari is listed okay now we can go ahead with the installation right so we're basically saying yum install ambari server on the first machine on the first machine we are going to install ambari server okay on the, you can see that it's the first step that's where we are installing ambari server we'll not do this on other machines okay Please go ahead. So this is basically downloading this Ambari server from the Ambari repository, which we added in the previous step. Please note that the installation size is 814 MB. Okay. So it's going to take a bit of time to download. All right. All right, what's the particular package for Ambari? You could see that when it was taking some time. So we are installing Ambari on first machine. Okay, we are installing Ambari server on first machine. Uh, just a second, there are a couple of questions from um, Noor. So we install JDK on other two data, data nodes, right? That's correct. And Java connector on Ambari server. No, Java connector on only the other two nodes. 
okay sorry java connector for database okay let me again answer first question is from node so we install jdk on the other two nodes correct right second and third and uh, the one that we are planning to put data nodes and other things so and java connector on ambari server yes java uh, mysql connector mysql connector on ambari server okay now question is and installing ambari on and installing ambari on ambari server yes yes we are installing the ambari server on the first machine question on uh, question from hitendra does uh, ambari need postgres ambari needs postgres yeah so uh, again the mysql we installed for the other services like uzi hive and things like that while we are going to go ahead with postgres for ambari server instead of going ahead with the mysql okay so ambari's metadata will go in postgres while hive and other things metadata will go in the uh, go in mysql postgres is again a database all right go ahead so so ambari internally installed postgres when we said ambari server install also we are um, setting up the ambari server now mysql is on third node we won't call it data node yet so we are starting the setup of the ambari server So a question from Sachin, if Ambari package as in Ambari repository is not present in the repository list, then yum install will not work. Then where can we can download the Ambari package? Correct. So there are other ways like you can specify, you can download this repository to your local drive and then you can use the yum install to use that repository. Okay. All right, so yeah now question is let's start the okay let's start the ambari server setup so please notice that we are specifying the jdbc driver so ambari server setup has successfully installed we basically setting up the ambari server okay all right so we are saying customize user account from ambari server okay so we are saying uh, no there okay so here it's asking that which which jdk do we want to use we'll say uh, jdk 1.8 what is the latest version of ambari i think it must have shown earlier the one that uh, we did while installing it must have shown okay it's 2.6 thank you Abhinav. all right so we are enabling uh, enable ambari server to download and install the aljado package we can say yes here okay what is aljado package aljado is used for uh, uh, compression in case of hdfs okay uh, uh, so uh, abhinav can we just pause a minute yes alok go ahead about the confusion First, uh, okay, let me clarify the questions. Question from Sachin is, is Ambari going to use both MySQL and other DB you told or one? I think it is going to use both, okay? It is internally downloaded Postgres. So we are going to let it use Postgres uh, for its own metadata, okay? For its own metadata, it's going to use Postgres while for the metadata of Hive and other things, it's going to use the it's going to use MySQL. All right. A question from Alok. MySQL DB DB is DB is need in Ambari server. Uh, not really, not really. It it is needed only in one of the nodes. It is needed for MySQL Uzi and things like. Uh, sorry, my MySQL is needed by Hive and Uzi while postgres will be used by used by uh, the postgres will be used by ambari server 
Hive comes with Ambari, correct. So while we will set up Hadoop, Hive comes with Hadoop. Hadoop will be downloaded and installed by Ambari, and Ambari will configure Hive to use this MySQL server. A question from Noor. So till this point, what we have done is to prepare the machine for Ambari. That's right. We have installed and downloaded Ambari and we are setting up an Ambari and now Ambari will take over to install Hadoop components. Very well said, Noor. So Hadoop is about managing files with all the components relying on relying on RDBMS for metadata. Hadoop is about managing files with all components relying on our kind of yes, kind of yes. Say um, Hive is using metadata uh, for Hive is using uh, MySQL for storing metadata. Uzi is using MySQL for met storing metadata. And uh, yes, that's kind of partly right. While HBase will not use any other database for storing its metadata. Question from um, Alok is, other two nodes do not need MySQL database? Not really, not really. We'll just, because Hive is going to be using one of the MySQL servers and uh, they all will use the same MySQL, okay? They all will use the my, same MySQL. So question from Grishma, does HBase come here? HBase will again be installed by Ambari. Ambari will take over and install HBase, Hive, Uzi, Scoop, all the Hadoop components will be installed by Ambari for us. There are around 20 components that it is going to install. All right, great. I hope it is clear now. So we are, we have installed Ambari server. Now we are configuring Ambari so that it is start showing us web interface and then we will start installing. A question from Bintao, how to add Spark to Hadoop? Again, Ambari will bring Spark with it Okay, but we can just download Spark and uh, configure it to use, uh, configure it to work with Hadoop. Okay, we can, you yourself can download your own copy of Spark and start using in CloudX Lab. Okay. Uh, all right. A few more questions. A question from Ethan: Does Spark also have metadata in RDMS? Correct. It does. There is something called Spark SQL, which comes with it comes with Spark Thrift Server that basically relies on Hive's metadata, and it also has its own metadata, which can be stored in, which can be specified to store in RDBMS. Okay. C question from Sachin: Components store metadata in MySQL. Correct. So that's that's kind of you can take that as a kind of thumb rule. Okay, what kind of data will MySQL DB has? So uh, as it's relational database, that's right. The data over data, which is metadata, will be there in the MySQL database. All right, question from Hitendra. Uh, today has been great information. Great, all right, let's move on. Okay, great. All right, now you can see that it is checking for Postgres and it's about to configure the local database, which is Postgres. It's creating schema, users, tables, and extracting various kinds of views. Uh, views are basically nothing but plugins for Ambari. Okay, now it has completely, it has completed the setup successfully. When you see this message, that means you have successfully installed, okay? So, so I have a question here from Bintao. Um, can can I just answer that one? Uh, question from Bintao is how to add a Spark to Hadoop and how to install. Check what languages R, Python, Scala, etc. Can be used within Spark. Good. So Spark will be installed. One copy will be installed by by Ambari, but we can also download our own copy of Spark directly from the net and start using that. Okay, just like in Linux, you have your home directory in that you can just download and start using Spark. You can use wget to download and install. And 
it all the other languages like R, Python, Scala, Java, we are going to you will have to install as a sysadmin. Okay. So a question from Grishma, please once um, once free show us the content present on MySQL DB. Actually, uh, okay, okay. All right, so we'll show that uh, probably at a, a later point of time. So once it has installed and created the, the databases, then you will get an idea. All right, all right. So you'll get an idea once Ambari runs and creates all the database tables. So we can take a look at MySQL at that point of time. Or you can, uh, 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 Abhidav, you can show it now. Okay, in one of the terminals. So we can say u root p and we can specify the password. Okay, show tables. Okay, show databases. So you can see we have create. We had created hive. Say use hive and show tables. Use hive and show tables. Okay, right now they're empty. And then use uzi and show tables. Empty. All right. So right now we have just created the two databases and everything else is empty. Great. All right. Moving ahead. So we have, I think we have started the Ambari server, right? Okay, we are starting now. So it's just starting now. You can see that the logs are going to be in where log Ambari server, Ambari server dot log. Okay, so this is where it is going to log the uh, log the error messages. The PID dot PID file is for storing the process ID. Server dot out is for storing the normal messages. Okay and dot log is for storing this. You can see that Ambari server start completed successfully and it is starting to listen on 8080. So how do we access this now? We find out the public IP address of this Ambari server, the first terminal. Okay, first terminal, this is the public IP address and access it via the browser colon 8080. Okay. All right, I think the default password is admin admin for this. No. The default password is admin admin. Correct. Thank you, Abhinav. All right, so it's admin admin. Now you can change the password for time being um, before something else happens here. Okay, we can go into the admin there on, on the login itself. On the login, you click on the login. I think it won't be there. Yeah, click on the login. Yeah, there. Okay. All right. So we can, in the users, we can change the password and you can change the password. Okay, so we get providing the old password. We are specifying the new password from Bari so that uh, the default one doesn't work. Okay, whenever you are installing, say Oracle database, you must stop. Do not, you change the password from Tiger to something else. I think there is a pass default password that's Tiger in Oracle, right? So okay, in the similar way, in most of the services, you should do that. Great, great. Now let's click on this icon, the logo, which takes us to the installation page. Okay which takes us to the wizard that will help us set up anything. We are given the we are giving the name to the to the cluster. Okay, we are saying Hadoop dem demo. All right. And there we go. So so we are going to say okay, this is the particular Hadoop version we are going to install and we are going to install the latest one and here it will contain all these versions of all these components by itself. Okay, so we are saying use the public repository. 
Okay, you can see that you use public repository and these are the local repositories. Okay, and these are the various versions of uh, uh, their repository. So it's going to add these repositories to yum and install using yum internally. So here we have, right? So great. So the one that it is going to use is CentOS 7, Red Hat 7, yes. CentOS and Red Hat is the same thing. Okay, so this is what it is going to install. Wonderful, wonderful. So, okay. So now, this is the place we tell, we tell Ambari that these are the machines on which we are going to use, we're going to use the we are going to install Hadoop, okay? So we add, we add the the host names, okay? These are the internal host names, okay? Internal host names, and all right. So we copied the these two, okay? Along with Ambari server itself, right? So we have in, put all the three machines name. Great. Now we have to give the private key. Okay, we have to provide the private key. We can choose the file or we can just copy paste the private key. Okay, remember our private key. So this is the private key. All right, this is the private key. Now we can say register and confirm. Okay. SSH user account, we're going to say send to us because send to us is the one which we have given the permission to. Okay. Okay. Internally, since Ambari will do SSH and other things to all these machines, so we are giving the private key to Ambari as well so that it can do the SSH and install and command all other nodes. can see that it is installing on these machines. At the same time, you can take a look at the logs. Okay, so right now it's running the agent script. Right, so First of all, uh, right now, basically it's downloading the components and uh, downloading the components and adding the repository, okay? And uh, basically uh, it has connected to the, the machines and let's just go ahead, next. Right now it essentially what it did was it installed something called Ambari agent and other basic tools, okay? Let's click next. Okay, so we what we have is we have all the softwares and services along with their versions. Okay, if you want to log analysis and other things, you have these extra components. Some of these components are standard Hadoop components. Some of these components are add-ons from, uh, some of these components are add-ons from uh, Hortonbox. Okay, so yeah, this is good enough. So we you can see that we have uh, which version of Spark we have? We have Spark 2, Spark 1, and we have Japlin, we have Druid, we have Mahat, we have Slider, we have almost everything here. Okay, we have Knox and Kafka and everything. Okay, so this is what we are going to go next. All right, let's go ahead. We have Knox, Kafka, Atlas, Ambari, Inframetrics, and things like that the flume and other components. So now is the time, now is the judgment time. Here we have three machines on which, uh, just a second, there's a question from Noor. Question from Noor is, I attended one AWS conference two days back. They showed their big data setup plus ML with says make their own high level abstraction over Spark. The question is, are the companies going for AWS big data version uh, or take AWS instances and install themselves? Good question, Noor. So when 
a company is as the company become more and more big data company they keep on moving to their own own in, own installation right when the company is beginning uh, to experiment with big data they generally use the aws uh, as in aws spark version instead of standard spark version what we are installing is for the people who really are serious about big data and they want to have the complete ownership of the infrastructure. A question from Indau Jeppelin is used here. How about Jupyter? Jupyter will, we, we will install separately. Okay, great. All right, so what we have is these uh, nodes. Now here, please pay, pay attention that it's asking for where to install name node, where to install secondary name node, app time server, resource manager, history ma server, history ser and Hive server, Hive meta store, and so on. Okay, so this is the uh, judgment call. The thumb rule is, the thumb rule is uh, keep, keep the memory, uh, you, you, uh, so thumb rule is the machines which have, uh, as in kind of balance out the memory uses. Do not bother the name node. Okay, in production, you should generally keep one machine just for the name node. Okay, so all right. So here we are, you can see that Hive Meta Store, we have specified it here, right? Hive server is there, Hive Meta Store is there, uh, and so on. So you can see that while Jukeeper server is installed on all the three machines. Okay, go down, go down. It's going to be installed, not yet installed. Okay, similarly, you can go down. Uh, where is the data nodes? Okay. Can you just search for data node on this page? Okay, data nodes will come next. Thank you. All right, so this is the, these are the various service configuration. Ideally, whatever, whatever Ambari is suggesting you, you should just go with that. Okay, now you will realize that why did we choose three machines instead of two machines? Because there are too many services. Therefore, we capped three machines. Okay. All right, go ahead. So generally the machines which don't have any services, services in them, they are generally for running the data nodes. Those machines, are called as uh, are called called basically the empty the uh, and the sorry the machines which don't have any services including data node they are called the edge edge node okay go ahead a question from Middao is each node with 15.5 GB four cores yes that means 16 GB does that mean my local machine have to have such memory and cores yes kind of 16 GB is kind of 8 GB is kind of which uh, Hortonworks is suggesting. Okay, not local machine, as in the machine on which you are installing, you're installing the, you're installing these uh, services. Okay. All right, a point from Abhinav. Here we are just, we're just changing the Hive server, Meta store, and Uji server to the node IP where MySQL is installed. That's good, that's too good. So what we are doing here is uh, that we're installing Hive server and Meta store on the third machine on which we install the MySQL. Okay, here we have three machines. Okay, a question from Hitend is what is Azure node? Azure node is some machine which doesn't have any service. That's just used for uh, launching the programs. A question from uh, we, here, there is no as node as such. I was just uh, giving you a definition. A question from Alok is here, we are having four machine, a uh, last machine. No, we just have three machines, okay? The first machine is the one which has the Ambari server, okay? Good, good, let's go ahead. So you can see all the services which are where visually above. Okay. All right. Uh, Noor wants to take a snapshot. You could take this. 
okay just keep in mind that the uh, uji server hive server they're going and meta store they're going to interact with mysql so we are just we are just putting them on the third machine where mysql is installed So you can see Hive server, Uzi server, and the, okay. Zookeeper server is anyway there in all the machine. Matrix connect collector is there on all the machines and so on. All right, that's pretty much. So let's go ahead. Great, great. All right, so now is the time that we want to define the slaves. So here, we we can basically select the uh, whether we want data node on all machines. So generally we put data nodes on all the machines. Okay. And node manager, node manager again in all machines because we want execution on all the machines, right? Remember our yarn discussion because we want our program to run all three machines. Therefore we are putting the container, we want containers to be run on all the machines. Therefore we are saying have data node on all three node manager in all three right now we are not using the nfs gateway but still we can install nfs gateway this helps us mount hdfs in the local machine okay next is region server region server also we can put it on all machine region server is used by hbase okay and flume also we can install on all the machines and uh, okay supervisor also we have put supervisor is for hue is that right? Okay, great. We have a Spark Thrift server. You can put select the Spark Thrift server also on all three machines. Okay. Except for name node, you can remove a Spark Thrift server from the name node uh, as a name node as in first machine. Okay. The Ambari server, what is the IP address? Okay, the IP address is 155. 155 means, okay, the first one is 155. Okay, so we can just, this is interesting. So name node is going to be where? Okay. Okay, actually name node is selected in the previous one. Okay, name node is on 155, correct? Good, we can uh, mouse over, that's good, that's good, yeah. All right, cool, let's move ahead. NFS gateway helps us mounting HDFS as a local file system. Okay, so normal usual Unix command will then start working on that NFS, HDFS file system. All right, good, good, let's go ahead. Okay, so I don't know what is Levy server and okay again i don't know what is druid 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 used to be disk manager right i don't know what is this anyway so client let it be the let the client be everywhere i don't know what clients are these okay I, ideally what you should do is you should install all the clients in all the machines as a thumb rule because you never know what kind of commands you will need where Great, let's move ahead. So I think I think we are all set. So after we are at install, start and test, at that time we'll take a break. Okay, there are some uh, you can see the errors that the one that requires our attention. Okay. Now we have to specify the password for Hive and Uzi. Okay. Since it is going to connect to our MySQL, so we are saying that use our MySQL and use the password, the one that we created earlier. Okay. So 
So it's asking us to run that command on the one here. So it says that, okay, we have to do sudo or something. No, I think uh, it has, uh, for time being, it stopped Ambari. Uh, it doesn't want us to run this. Okay. Right now it has disabled the installation for time being, uh, Abhinav. So maybe it doesn't want us to run it. It says that Ambari env.sh permission denied. For time being, it has disabled that. To use MySQL with the Hive, you must once download. We already are doing that, right? This is what we already did. So I think this is okay. I think this is okay. Just set, specify the password and that's all. Is it not able to connect? Okay, let it test the connectivity. Uh, also, can we do one thing uh, from another uh, machine, say machine one, can we use my SQL command and try to connect from the machine on which we are installing Ambari? Can we use my SQL command there and connect to the one? Okay, so let's just take the third one. Okay. Enter. Okay. Oh, we need to, okay. For this to test, maybe we'll need to install the MySQL. MySQL client. Okay, no worries. This is all good, this is all good. This one also we have done well. On which machine did it work this time? Okay, good, good. Connection field, can we take a look at connect why connection field? Yeah, I think it doesn't show the error. Password do not match. Okay. I just test again. Is our MySQL allowing remote connections from the network, local network? Good, very good. All right, all right. So now what we did was we are telling Ambari that these are the login password of Hive. So while configuring Hive server, it will basically, so these are the login password of MySQL. So Hive, it will, while creating the Hive configuration file, Ambari will use these login and password. They'll set, set these login password for MySQL in the configuration of Hive. Okay, now we can go ahead. Now the similar thing we have to, can we do the save here? Do we need to do save here? Okay. Great, great. Now what we're doing is we're basically fixing the errors that it is showing, right? So let's just try to fix these services and see if it works. Okay, again, I think this we have already done. All right, so yes, what was the password? Uzi123 and Uzi. Uzi123, Uzi and test the connection. Wonderful. All right, so it worked. Now the error must have gone, right? Now error, you can see error is gone. Now we can switch to Accumulo and see what's happening there. Accumulo root password, we can just specify any root password for, for the sake of it. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, good. Now that error is also gone in the case of Accumulo. Now it says that Ambari matrix has got an error. So we are trying to again, set some kind of admin password. Generally, you should keep these password in any password manager. Okay. And Okay, so we just keep these password in a password manager. All right, so I think we are almost done with fixing the errors. Okay, so it says activity analysis error. And it says again, some kind of password it wants us to set. Okay, for activity explorer. Good, so I think we are done setting up all the passwords. All right, all right. Okay, proceed. It says uh, Atlas is configured to use Atlas install in the cluster. If you would like to use Atlas, let's just proceed. We don't want to use Atlas because we are right now. Okay, there's not too much in use here. Okay, let it run. Yeah, this is the final step. Okay, final step. Okay, it is showing that these are the various repositories added and then these are the configure configuration of which server goes where, which client goes where. A question from Sachin is, so each component need password for MySQL? It may, um, okay. So uh, not only password for MySQL, it was only Hive and Uzi that needed. For others, we need to generally create the master passwords. All right, so these are the various services where they're going to be installed. Uh, once more, can you go down, please? So, yeah. And here you can see Pig, Scoop, Uzi, Zookeeper, Hive, Headspace, Days, and so on. So Uzi is on all three machines, while uh, Pig is, client is everywhere. So we have put clients everywhere. And Flume is all three machines, Accumulo, Falcon, everything that is there in the, uh, yeah. Okay, so you can see that uh, we have installed, we've just selected all the nodes. Kafka is there, there is only one broker. Ideally, we should have put all the three brokers. Okay, all right. So, okay, great, great. Now let's move ahead for time being. Okay. And also we can, so question from Noor is, can you print this to PDF? Uh, yes, you can print to PDF and keep it. But we are already moved ahead. Don't worry about it, so now. Okay. It can be exported, okay, cool. I think, yeah. All right, so it's preparing to deploy a 99 task. And uh, all right, so um, can we can we take a quick break for 10 minutes and come back by 9.53? Okay. I mean, is it good time to take a break? All right, so we can, we can, uh, yeah, we can take a, a 15 minutes break. Okay, break for 15 minutes and back by say 10 p.m. IST, okay? 10 p.m. IST. Hi everyone, I'm back, so should we start now? All right, all right, so All right, so basically in around 40 minutes, the installation is successful on the three nodes, okay? There are some warnings encountered in the case of the second node, that, but those would be probably with respect to memory or something like that, right? So we can take a look at the warnings. So it's a check Falcon. Okay, 
So probably the could not authenticate or something. So probably the, okay, there's something wrong with Falcon, but that doesn't matter. So we are not going to use Falcon here, but in case you're going to use Falcon, you might want to fix that error. Okay, maybe change a password for the Falcon or something of that sort. Okay, so this is, uh, this is how we successfully completed the installation. All right. And uh, so we can go ahead next. Okay, so it has successfully installed and uh, okay, you can see that you can just click on complete. Okay, so you can see that all the services are up and this is the situation of our cluster. So three out of three data nodes are up, name node uptime is 26 minutes and uh, so on. So you have Zookeeper, Yarn, Kafka and, and so on. So, all right. And you can see the memory usage. You can see the, the overall status of the cluster, okay. All right, so, okay. So next is that we can just take a look at our Hadoop FS command, but since we have not installed console, web console and other non Hadoop services, because those are not generally required. Those are very specific to CloudX Lab. Okay, so we can see that Hadoop FS LS is running fine and we can just run PySpark probably. Okay, you can see that PySpark um, is 1.6.3. So is there something called PySpark 2? Okay, so it is trying to bind the UI there and here we go. Okay, so similarly, we could see Hadoop uh, yarn or execute any of the commands uh, there. You can try git cloning our repository and running that command. So I'm going to give you this just for, oh, but we don't have that data, right? We don't have that. Uh... Okay, we don't have data right now, so it'll be difficult to demonstrate. Now, a question from, um, uh, right? Okay, a question from Alok means Kafka cluster is also created. Yes, Kafka is also created along with it. All right, right now we have only installed one, one, one node, the broker, but we could add more brokers. All right. A question from Sachin, other components do not need database, then where they store their metadata? Okay, they have their own configuration file, right? So say for example, um, uh, Hadoop, uh, say Hive client, for example, has something called Hive conf. They're there, that's where they're keeping the configuration. While the um, tools like Flume, they use the config file instead of a data. It just, it just basically the design of these individual components that is more for the more towards uh, uh, RDBMS. It's like you deciding that your, your product should use file or your product should use a database. Okay, that kind of thing. While in case of HBase, there is the concept of metadata is there, but that is stored in HDFS itself. So for HBase, the data as well as metadata both are in, stored in HDFS. So it's the design of individual components and the way they are structured. All right, so how question from Alok is that how do we add more nodes in this cluster? Good question. So you could go to host, you could go to host, 
okay there is a tab called host and you could say add new host okay and then you put the ip address of the new host and, and so on okay all right now we can okay now you can take a look at the hive and uzi tables if it will make sense now that's a good good question abhinav okay so uh, remember that uh, there was a question related to the tables in hive in the tables in in there right in in mysql so let's go to the third terminal the, the terminal of third machine there we could say mysql and provide that account so here we could say show databases and now you can see in the hive you have these many tables right as you will create more tables in hive it'll basically add that entry to the tables okay now okay so now you say use uh what was it uzi so now if you say show tables okay so you can see that there are these tables that have been created all right so right now question from uh, uh, alok is like kafka broker spark or hdfs node yes we can do that okay when we select when we add the node it will ask us to add more uh, more uh, no, more services to it we can select that and then go ahead okay question from node is so if we create a new user account it will automatically get created in hdfs yes okay uh, and um, a question from binda is since there is zeppelin with ambari without jupiter it will be convenient for us to learn how to use jupiter could you open zeppelin and uh, demonstrate how to use it okay so uh, right so actually we have also not used zeppelin much we have mostly uh, used uh, the 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 um, the other uh, uh, other tools okay so we'll have to take a look at how to use it if zeppelin provides um, we need to take a look at how to use it and a question from uh, noor is will uh, adding new host means downtime no new host does not mean uh, a downtime most of these services are do not mo most of the services in hadoop do not require uh, uh, downtime just that in very critical cases when you are really changing say hdfs configuration or name nodes configuration in that time it would require reboot other than that you don't require reboot okay and a question from alok uh, automatically install all the service into new node right so no we did select jukeeper at that point of time it got it did get uh, ambari did install jukeeper okay it zeppelin similar to jupiter correct that's right okay a question from binta how to add jupiter into ambari we can just basically follow the guidelines of conda or anaconda to install jupiter so jupiter the one the way we have installed in cloudx lab is not using ambari we used our own scripts to set up jupiter for all the users okay so this is jupiter's config and is there a ui or something like that can we oh there is a zeppelin ui okay from the quick links we can access that now can you change it to the public ip address probably that will be a better idea okay it is 1041 okay 104 yeah this the one i think there is a again amazon's fireball is stopping it or what this is connecting okay all 
All right, a question from Noor is, if one wants to install MongoDB, will it be on HDFS or local drive? It will be on local drive. A question from Alok, if you want to do the same exercise from AWS for three machines, okay, how much we have to pay? I'm not sure. It's around like 1,000 rupees per, per couple of hours. Okay. So, and a question from uh, Subu is, if we add new node, do we need to install all other required tools or automatically took it from existing nodes? If we add new node, uh, we will have, uh, it'll require all other tools automatically. Do we need to install all other tools? Basically, this Ambari will guide you. Basically, it is equivalent to uh, downloading all the components on the new node and then uh, and then doing the need pull. Okay. So it will need to install all other components. Yes. Okay. So like all the clients, JDK, all other tools, it will install uh, on the new node. Question from Alok is, uh, if you want to do, okay, I think we're done. A question from Noor is, is MongoDB not a distributed? It is distributed, but it comes with its own distributed way. It doesn't use HD HDFS right away. Okay, it has its own MongoFS, it has own Mongo S, it has own Mongo D. So those basically store in the local file system. It has its own file management way, okay? Say for each each collection, it'll create a it'll create something called um, block of data and all that. Okay. Yes, it has its own distributed way. All right. So great, great. So did it open? No. The Now it does not open, so we'll have to see what is wrong with that. Never mind. So I think I think Japlin will have to take a look uh, at later point of time. So okay. All right, so we'll take a look at the Japlin later point of time. We have changed the server there and okay. So it says that SSH key manager is, you need to change it. Key store also we need to change. Okay, but we'll see that later. We have never done Japlin yet. We might have to research and fine tune a bit. Okay, a question from Noor is Telnet from local server might help. Yes, we could try an NC and see if it's connecting. But yeah, I think they will really require a bit more involved. All right, so that's pretty much installing Hadoop end to end. Okay, so the dev tools and other things that are extra part of the cloud extent, those parts we are not covering as such, but this is basically the standard configuration. And afterwards, we can start creating our accounts in HDFS and then start using all of this. So already CentOS is done. Okay. All right. So I think that's pretty much. If you have any more questions, we would like to. Uh, Abhinav, do you have uh, more things to show or are we done? A question from Noor, if I need to create a user, yes, you'll need to create user everywhere on all the machines as well as in HDFS, as well, sorry, in, you'll have to create in Ambari. Great, great. So, sure, we will, we will export the configs and we'll send it to you. Okay, so that's pretty much. And uh, do not forget to de destroy these instances. Okay, so wonderful, wonderful set of questions. And uh, thank you, Abhinav, thank you everyone. And a question from Subu is that, can we do the same setup for using VMware? So VMware is basically a makeshift arrangement, which gives you virtual machine and which has a single setup. So 
uh, that's not that's basically uh, our arrangement this is a real cluster setup okay this is a real cluster setup vmware is you just download the virtual machine and run the virtual machine that will have the hadoop already installed in it so somebody installed hadoop in their virtual machine saved it as a file and then that that is what is given as vmware appliances okay but that's not a real cluster it's it has name node data node everything on one machine and uh, it is not really something that uh, would help you understand distributed computing but for uh, if you do not have a cloud x lab access vmware could come handy okay a question from noor please let us know how much credit do we require to set up this uh, practice maybe it would require around say um maybe around 40 50 dollar would spent uh, would be spent in like uh, a day or so for this setup okay okay so you could experiment with this look at look at the prices of aws take a look at the time including the bandwidth including the including the file uh, including the what do you say including the um, prices of the disk price of the instance price of the bandwidth and uh, so on so take a look at the prices and uh, select three instances there is a, a pricing the one uh, abhinav is showing thank you abhinav so here there's something called aws simply month calculator here you can add the instances and you will get a clear picture of the pricing calculator okay you could add and and do the evaluation all right so that's that's pretty much for today i hope this session was useful to all of us okay a question from bintao although my local machine does not has not enough memory i'll just try to practice to install ambari later okay great great but you can also try with distillation or you could try with uh, some other systems where you have a cheaper cheaper uh, servers that could also help you understand okay robin robin's point is that excuse me my pc is hanged i rebooted so i lost my recording from end when will you send the recording uh, did you uh, did it include the q and a chat okay q and a i think uh, what we'll do is we will send you the q and a along with it okay so no worries we are going to put it there all right no worries no worries robin okay so i'm sure that this uh, session was useful to you and uh, i look forward to see you over the weekend okay